Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com. In this video, we're covering G Translate. It's a free Miam plugin for WordPress, and it allows you to use the Google Translate widget effectively to translate your website into various languages. Now, you're probably using this because you just want an easy way to translate your site, and you think that it's going to provide some immediate SEO value. One of the things about Google Translate is while it can translate certain words fairly well, like it could translate sun into Spanish, Swahili, Swedish fairly easily, it lacks context awareness. And that's what all translation ready solutions lack right now is they don't understand context. So you're using this is probably not a good thing to do for most of your users because Google Translate in itself is pretty weak. But I wanna go over this plugin because it's used by a lot of individuals and I just wanna talk about what its settings are. We'll be going over the paid version, but I'm gonna talk about the two, uh, the free version, but we will be talking about the two paid options right there, just so you can get a little bit of a better understanding of what they actually do and mean for you. Okay, so you install it and you get a couple of options for the widgets. Uh, you could choose a widget look, which is the appearance that the widget will show. So it'll give you all a preview over here. And as I mentioned here, it's a drop down with flags. You could change this to flags and drop down. Just the drop down, which allows you to select your language in text. This is probably what I would choose for most websites, so it's not so annoying. You could choose to just use the flags, which I don't recommend. Flags with the language name, I don't really think I'd ever recommend that flags with a language code. Most users don't know what a language code probably is. Uh, just the language names, which doesn't really make any sense. Language codes, which makes even less sense. A globe, which when you click it, will give you all the flags that you've enabled, which is actually kind of cool, but I wouldn't use that for most websites. And a pop-up that when you click it, it'll allow you to put your preferred language. Uh, no matter what you go with, it's honestly your choice. I'm gonna be selecting the drop-down because it's very minimalist and doesn't have too many annoying options. Uh, you can choose your translate from. This is the language that your site is currently in. Since this website is in English, that is what we will be using for this nice little widget. Then you get an option for a subdirectory URL structure. <clears throat> so what this means is if the user wants it to be translated into Russian, it will go to, in this case, cloudwaysapp.com slash ru and then the page. So it would be Instead of how to remove social warfare in line CSS, it would have another slash right here and it would be slash RU as the language code. The advantage to this is it does allow it to be indexed uh, by Google as its own separate URL. And that's something that's very important. As you can see, there are no href lang tags included. And then you can also choose to do it as a subdomain URL structure. The only time I recommend doing subdomain URL structure when you're having different languages is if you're covering different topics. So um, let's see, I have dailydrivertips.com. It's a hobby site of mine where I talk about cars. Uh, let's say I had a subdomain of kr.dailydrivertips.com. And the reason I would have .kr in that case is while the content may be in Korean, it would be talking specifically about cars in the Korean market instead of broadly of the international type cars that are primarily going to be talked about on the main website. Because when you use a subdomain, it's almost like treating the website as two separate websites. Googlebot tends to treat subdomains as their own domain, even though they're attached to example.com. Um, more or less, if you're just doing a one-to-one -one translation of your existing content, you should almost always use a subdirectory. So that way it's just maintaining, okay, that's dailydrivertips.com and .ru, oh, these are all the Russian you, uh, translations so that way the Russians can read it. That makes perfect sense. And it's easily understood that this is the exact same website because it's just a subfolder. You could then choose uh, in the free version to enable analytics tracking. Uh, just kind of tells you how many users are using which language? Auto switch to the browser language. I highly recommend you use this. Uh, the primary reason is if somebody comes to your website and their primary browser language is set to say Spanish and you are able to use the Spanish translation module, then this could be beneficial to them. However, again, then you're kind of relying on the Google Analytics translation service, which I'm not a, I can, 
uh, I can speak Spanish, but I'm definitely not fluent. So I'm not going to try and say that, oh, Google, Analytics, Google Translate is definitely sufficient for Spanish speakers because it's probably not. Um, you could probably use it in your Spanish class in high school and you would fail it immediately. And that's all I'm going to say about that is you need to be wary of when you are using an automatic translation that just because somebody's language is set to say Spanish, they may speak English as well and they may have known that before clicking the URL. It's just something to be aware of. You could choose to add it to your menu, so you could just do it in your primary, secondary, handheld menu. Whichever menus are registered by your theme, it will show it. I'll show you what this looks like. So it's going to go to my primary menu, so it's probably going to get slapped right around here somewhere. Or in my case, it didn't get added anywhere. You could choose to show a floating language selector, so basically it will add it, uh, say at the top left, and it should go like right up here, and it's just a drop down. Personally, I don't recommend doing any of these methods, and I check. I do recommend you just add it manually. It'll look a lot less hideous for the average user. Um, if you're trying to highlight that you are a multi-language enabled website, you want to at least label a dropdown somewhere that's easily visible, whether that's in the header as the dropdown, or if in the footer by your copyright, you have the globe thing, so they click it and they get all their different languages. Whichever way you choose to display your widget, just make sure it's in a position that's easily findable and that it can be easily recognizable that they're supposed to click that to translate. Because just having a bunch of flags may not necessarily be clear that, oh, if they click this, it's gonna give them their language. And just like using the globe, while it looks really cool, it may not necessarily be clear to the end user that when they click that, it's going to translate into their necessary language. A dropdown tends to be pretty universal because it says select language and anybody can typically understand, oh, select language, and then it gives them a bunch of languages. You could choose to show the native language names, which when you check that, it will show them in their native language instead of the English version of it, which I probably recommend for most users, just so that way they can easily select them. Uh, you can also modify the position of the language by dr dragging and dropping them wherever you wish. Um, so let's say you want English to be the first one, and it says it's gonna be your default anyways, you just move it all the way up to the top. All right, English is now first, which makes sense, uh, depending on your target market and if your language is primarily in English. Make sure you put whatever your primary language is as the first one, just so that way for some reason if it gets swapped, your users will be able to easily swap back to it. If you wanna easily add the widget code, you can easily do so by copying and pasting this HTML. Uh, keep in mind though, that you do have to copy all of this HTML. So if you want it to be displayed in say a widget, you go to your appearance widgets, and let's say we wanna to add to our sidebar. So this is HTML code, make sure you use the HTML widget, or the, there it is, add it to your sidebar, click add, paste the content in, and uh, hopefully this shows up quite easily in my sidebar. Select your language, and if I translate it to Dutch, it'll use its JavaScript engine to do the rewriting. Not all content will be translated. As you can see here, WooCommerce Playground, which was the site title, was not translated. My name was not translated either, and that is to be expected. Uh, another thing is, one thing you'll notice is the title of the page does change based on the language you select, which is a nice touch, and most elements on the page do change. I'm assuming the inclusion of the site title not being translated differently might be because of the word being WooCommerce, or it could very well just be that they excluded the site title for branding purposes. I'm not really sure how they went around doing that. Um, you could choose if you're having an issue to say, I have, a, I, have a, I have issues saving, and when you click this, so right now when you click save, it will use its default. If you choose, I'm having issues, it will, it'll try to use a different means to save it. You can also use a short code method. So as I mentioned here, you can copy this uh, code right here. And this is gonna be your short code. If you did not wanna use the, hold on, let me just set this to English, please. Okay. Now, we used previously by copying and pasting the code, we can use a short code. Now, if you try to use it in the HTML widget, um, it'll just output the widget itself. You'll have to go ahead and use the text widget, which sounds counterintuitive, um, but if you use text widget in your sidebar, it will execute it. Make sure you paste it in the visual mode, and you'll click save, and you'll come back over here. And the advantage of using the shortcode implementation 
is that it will automatically update when you make changes as opposed to the code implementation. And then of course, if you wanna add it to your template files, you can uh, copy the code and echo the short code via that method. This is all there is in this plugin. There is a premium version where you get a couple of other things and we're gonna talk about those real quick. Um, you get search engine indexing, which means it will allow, it'll first of all, it'll add the hreflang tags and the search engines will understand, oh, if they go to slash RU, they'll get their URL. It will work in China because Google Translate by default it isn't blocked in China. I believe most Google services are blocked in that country. You get increased international traffic and AdSense revenue. That's just a side effect of your website being in a different language. Uh, seamless updates, again, that's kind of expected. You get that in the free version. Language hosting, a custom domain like example.fr and example.es. Very interesting functionality here. Uh, the URL in slug will be translated, which is awesome. The metadata, so keywords, page description, etc., will also be translated. Great. Automatic translation and a post editing service. This is what this plugin is actually for. Um, you pay for the, you get the free version. It uses Google Translate, which is probably not all that reliable or even accurate. But you pay for the premium version for all the SEO benefits and the uh, post editing service. The post editing service will have somebody who speaks that language translate your text for you. Um, as I mentioned here, human level neural translations. Uh, take this with a grain of salt. Any kind of automated translation service will not be all that accurate. You can also choose to edit your translations automatically. And if you wish to try, uh, you just go to the try now and it'll take you to gtranslate.io. And uh, here we'll open this real quick in a tab. And you get this lovely little website that shows you that all the languages they support. This is actually a very well-known service. It has um, millions of users across many different platforms. So they are quite reliable. Uh, one thing to keep on mention here is, oh, here you go. So if you choose custom, which is um, $7.99 a month, you get your free version right here. It'll use the Google Translate and Bing automatic translations, unlimited words, and page views. If you choose the $7.99, you get the bilingual functionality, or you could choose all languages. Um, bilingual is probably what most of you are going to use. The thing is, is most websites don't need to be translated into every language. Most websites only have one or two markets where they do primarily well. Most websites only do really well in one market. If you're in a service and in an area where a secondary language is frequently spoken, for instance, if you're, say, in uh, a plumbing service in Miami, you may very well need to have your website translated into Spanish because there is a very large Latin population in Miami. So a bilingual translation would be good, but you certainly don't need to pay for Swahili and a bunch of other ones that are not going to provide you any value. If you wanna get full translation, you have to go all the way up to the very bottom, which is gonna be the URL translation, which is very important for multilingual SEO. So, well, you can pay for the business one as well, but it's really gonna be the uh, enterprise level where you're really going to see most benefits. I would love to get my hands on the uh, paid versions as a test. I might reach out to them, but it's it's a useful bit of service. Uh, there's a lot of companies that do this. Um, this is one of them, convey this as another service, and they all work on the same principle. You translate them in the cloud. You can have a manual translation, which you can edit all translations uh, via the paid services on their little admin panel, and it works. It's just, it'll, the first pass through is always gonna be machine and then you can have a manual edit. With the bilingual, you get one additional option. All languages is obviously all languages. Um, there's absolutely no difference between custom with all languages and the startup plan. They're exactly the same thing. And as it mentions here, you get a translation delivery network that'll be delivered by our cloud network. No software is installed on your server. Quite a few services like this. I'd love to give this one a shot just to try it. Uh, actually, I actually have another one that I will be reviewing in the near future that does basically the same thing. If you have any questions though about the free version, you can ask me in the comments below. Paid version, there will be a video on it because I'm very intrigued at how reliable this service is in terms of delivering your URLs because that's one thing about these services is they actually host copies of your website basically on their own servers where all the machine translation is done and any edits that need to be done are performed. That's why it's so seamless is because they effectively copy and paste your website and just retranslate it. Uh, but if you have any questions, ask in the comments below. Otherwise, make sure to like, subscribe, and I will gladly see you in the next one.